Mr. Brown, your reaction to the inter- to the cut in interest rate from 0.75 to 0.25. Good morning to you. Well, hopefully this will be a massive reassurance to uh, to the industry, to the markets, that actually the authorities are on their side. Uh, we actually did a hearing with Mark Carney last week, and we asked him, as the Treasury Select Committee, uh, we asked him exactly this question, would he do an emergency cut in interest rates? He wasn't thinking about it then, but the markets have been in turmoil in this last week. And it, what it does show is that basically all the authorities uh, are on, on side on this, trying to make sure we get through this coronavirus outbreak with a minimal disruption to the economy possible. If you would, Mr Brown, explain to my listeners what it is hoped this will bring about in simple terms. Okay, what it does do is it reduces the cost of borrowing for companies. Uh, it makes it cheaper for them to take out loans to uh, invest. Uh, if they've got loans already, it reduces their payments on a on a weekly or monthly basis, uh, and it gives confidence to those to those companies that do do have uh, loans. Uh, and that means that they know that they can uh, sort of carry on trading with more confidence that they'll have greater uh, income and fewer outgoing costs. Let's talk about companies. Let's talk about smaller companies, and let's talk about the possibility of some kind of business rate relief. Mr. Brown, what are you hearing about later today? Regarding that. Well, you're also asking about the budget. Yes, here. sorry, yes, uh, indeed. Yeah, and um, uh, so I don't know <laughs> the details of the budget. Uh, I would certainly call on the Chancellor to say, think about small businesses. He has said he's going to do everything possible uh, to make sure that uh, small businesses do get through it. Uh, that it is particularly difficult for small businesses, as you imply. They don't have the uh, most of them don't have the reserves. If they lose business for three months, they're going to find it very difficult. So I know he's thinking about it, but we'll have to wait to see uh, what actually happens. But business rate relief, as you say, is an obvious uh, thing to do. One newspaper, the Daily Mail, talks of a six hundred billion pound boost for Britain's infrastructure. Is that correct? Is it something you would support? You sit on the Treasury Select Committee. Uh, absolutely. I mean, so one of the big themes of this budget is delivering on a manifesto commitments. We were just uh, elected back in December. Uh, uh, and a big part of that was delivering on infrastructure. As you know, Boris, Prime Minister, is very keen on infrastructure. I actually worked for him when he was Mayor of London, and we developed he loved, a lot of He loves buses and, and bridges, that man. He, he does like infrastructure. I know it's a big personal interest of his. Uh, and indeed, uh, 600 billion, that's uh, what we're expecting, a tripling of uh, spending, and it'll be the highest level since uh, the 1950s. Can we afford it? Government borrowing is at record lows at the moment. If you are ever, it's extraordinarily cheap for the government to borrow money at the moment. And so, if you're ever going to spend on infrastructure, then uh, now is the time to do it. As a country, we've, we've tended to underspend for decades. Uh, you see that uh, often. And some of our railways, yeah, absolutely, yeah, you do. You, you see it, you know, and so. We clearly need to do it. Uh, it's also part of the whole levelling up agenda. I mean, I represent a seat in the south, south of the country, but uh, I've got all these colleagues from the north of England now, and uh, the voters across the north of England have uh, voted Conservative. There's a certain expectation there. We certainly do need to level up. We, are, as a country, we've got one of the biggest regional variations in GDP, like the differences between the rich areas and the poor areas, is far greater than any other G7 country and almost any other developed country. Uh, but we are a single country. We need to make sure we're all... Uh, on the same train economically, as it were, that we're all going in the same direction. And a key way of doing that is infrastructure spending. Lastly, your MP for the Good Folk of South Cambridgeshire, are you concerned you could be a super spreader, Mr Brown? Well, I'm taking all the precautions that we're advised to take, and we are very much uh, following scientific and medical advice on this from the chief medical officer, who's uh, become a bit of a TV celebrity now. I'm uh, washing my hands absolutely regularly, uh, trying to avoid uh, trying to avoid shaking hands unless ne- unless absolutely necessary. Uh, and uh, but obviously, you're referring to a case now that we've had. Uh, yes, Nadine Doris Nadine. Yes, in well. and she is actually she's actually WhatsApping at the moment, so I can she, she is on the app. She's definitely uh, getting well, even on the even on the app. She's on the she's on the app. <laughs> On the app. She's on the up on the app. Uh, she's feeling an awful lot better, which is uh, fant- fantastic news. Uh, but And I think Parliament should carry on. Right. Uh, the next question you're going to ask me is, should we close down Parliament, I think? And I think Parliament should carry on okay. for as long as possible. We set the tone for the rest of the country, but whether we need to take other measures, I wait advice from the medical authority.